And I don't know where you've been, but you're gonna respect this courtroom. My life has proven that it's not about where you come from, it's about where you're going. From a jailed youth who had my record expunged to becoming the youngest judge elected. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. In just 15 years. Ma'am, let me know when you want to go to rehab. Otherwise, I think you're a crackhead. Absolutely not. My goal is to inspire others to overcome their obstacles. You don't need him and his little raggedy roommate. Thank you. All while having a little fun on Mathis Court. You look like you're ready to lie right the first <laughs> word out your mouth. <laughs> this is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Fern MacArthur is suing Gregory Abadair in the amount of $625. Mr. MacArthur claims his neighbor led him to believe his house was haunted and says the defendant then charged him to remove a ghost that didn't exist. All right, state your name. Fern MacArthur. Sir? Gregory Abadair. All right, and sir, you're suing the plaintiff for $625. You charged him to remove a ghost from the house that didn't exist, says he felt the ghost. That's what you say, he felt the ghost. Why me? <laughs> Start with you, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I am suing my neighbor, Greg, uh, for $625 because he swindled me out of that because he led me to believe that there was a ghost in my house, and that was not the case at all. How could he come in your house and make you think there was a ghost there? Well, it all started when I moved from uh, Nashville, Tennessee to Plano, Texas. I was looking for a house that I could afford, um, and I found this one, and I was throwing a party at my house because I wanted to get to know the neighbors. So I passed out flyers, um, and he showed up on time, so I thought he was gonna be, you know, a nice guy, and then when the party was over, he offered to stay and help clean up, and you know, he asked me about how the house was. And then I, I started to tell him, you know, it was like, I, I'm hearing things that night. You Just, told him you were hearing things. I, I, I told him that, I was okay. like, I was hearing things that night, and I didn't know what it was. It just sounded like something moving around and whatnot. And so he mentioned to me that the previous owner, uh, Mrs. Hudson, passed away in that house. I had no idea. The, uh, the real estate owner didn't tell me that, so I had no idea that somebody <laughs> passed oh, away no. in that house. No, no. <laughs> so, everybody that owns a house, when they get 80, 90, 100 and pass, the real estate person is supposed to tell you. It would be nice to know something like that, yeah. He planted that idea that it's the ghost of Mrs. Hudson in the house, you know, but at, at that time when he mentioned it to me, it was like, okay, well, that, uh, that kind of makes sense, I guess, you know, I'm a little bit. Because you're hearing things already. I'm hearing things, it's like, okay, if she died here, you know. What time do you usually hear things? It's usually in the evening time. Yeah, when like people start late getting at night. high. Uh -huh. Late uh -huh. at night is usually when, when late it Late at night, yeah, yeah, when people start getting you know, high. That's not how it go. Mm-hmm, late I, at night. I Drop the mushrooms off on you, you seeing everything. You seeing and hearing everything. <laughs> You'll give me some testimony, sir. I'm sorry, I've been neglecting you. That's okay. It's a, I know it sounds like it's an interesting story, Your Honor, but I am a paranormal investigator. What happened with me is when I was over there, and this is the thing that makes me laugh about his testimony is, he said I planted the seed. I thought he knew. Everybody in the neighborhood knew. All I did was knew ask what? him. That about uh, Mary Lou that passing away. That a ghost away. lived there? That Mary Lou had Mary Lou passed transitioned away. Yes. into a ghost? Yes. She needs to go home. She needs to see the light and go home. Okay, God didn't send her. She just hasn't left. Got and it. that's where I come in, okay? And back to planting the seed. There yeah, was no she seed. must know she's going to hell. That's why she ain't leaving. She's like, she was I ain't a sweet lady. I, I, ain't leaving I knew her house. before. So I can die five times. I ain't leaving out of here. I know where I'm going. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, mean, I knew her before. Um, she was married. She, her and her husband, Clint, would walk the neighborhood all the time. Then once he passed away, I believe it was in 2005, then she just became a recluse, like never came out. Like you'd see her in the window, I'd see her in the window every now and then, and people would drop off her groceries. And then when she passed, you know, uh, it, it was said that, you know, once in a while people would still see her in the window. That's what I'm talking about, the neighborhood and stuff like that. Did I ever see her in the window? No, I didn't. I never saw anyone in a window or anything. But you know how neighborhoods are, they talk. Did you ever see what is referred to as a ghost at his house? I did not. Did you ever see anything that we might describe as a ghost? I did not see anything, no. So no one saw a ghost. Did you go and evaluate 
the house so, to determine whether there was a ghost. I, d I did not evaluate until he invited me over. To do what? Just as a to, casual No, gathering. he wanted, he, he was convinced it was a ghost. Okay, so he wanted to hire you. Yes, yes. And, and, and I, did, I did lead on a little bit because I'm like, okay, what are you hearing? And he said that the thing that stood out to me was the, the groaning. What's that? Groaning. Exactly. Yeah, groaning, like groaning, like, oh, oh, oh like that, I thought you, know? you said the woman husband had died before. Okay. I guess he didn't yeah. leave the house either. Yeah. That's good, that's good. That's Go good. Ahead. But yeah, so I mean, that's what stood out, not the creaking and all that stuff, the, the, the groaning part. And I'm like, oh, all right. And then I was like, oh, well, then I brought up the story that I thought he already knew. Coming up on Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. I just thought it was an old creaky house. No, you didn't. You even said it yourself. I didn't know what it was. He said he was into the same things I am, but apparently now he's not. Yes. Are you? And later. Everyone on set was pretty stressed out. James was the director or? Yeah, yes, right. I, he's kind of director. He was being a diva the whole time. I, I was not being a diva. I was actually very respectful. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6870. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Mathis Court is back with a case of Fern MacArthur, who is suing Gregory Abadair for civil fraud. What was the agreement? The agreement was he said he'd give me the friends and family discount of $125 an hour, and he ended up being there for five hours, which I had no idea how long these things would go. Sounds reasonable. He came in, yeah, I asked him to come in because I wouldn't have thought of a ghost, but he said that he was in, into that stuff. What did stuff. you think? The things you were hearing? I just thought it was an old creaky house. No, you didn't. You even said it yourself. I didn't know what it was. He said he was into the same things I am, but apparently Paranormal? now he's not. Yes. Are you? I'm not into it, but I, I listen to people, you know? It's just like, oh, you, you're into that? That's cool, okay, oh, you know? I, you I listen I, I, to I, don't, it. I listen, I don't Without knock. Without a problem. Yeah, I don't knock. It's like, if okay. you're interested into it, I, I can Good understand. Good enough. I'm glad you listen to people and you have no problem with them. I try so to. you do have a sense of what it is to have paranormal presence because you've heard about it. People talk about it. You listen. You don't have a problem with the things they say. So you do have the knowledge of what might exist in your home when you hear noises. Otherwise, why did you mention it to him? I didn't know at that time that there was a death in that house. What noise did you hear? I heard, like, it, it sounded like it was some creaking, some groaning, some, it sounded okay, like somebody was walking around. Part. I personally don't believe in ghosts, but some people do, some people have evidence of whatnot. So you've heard a lot about them from people who tell you, and you don't have a problem with them telling you, so you have knowledge of it. And then you got direct evidence of something paranormal in there, and that turned out, you tell me your experience well, uh, going through the house. Okay, tell well, me your experience. Sure, it was, it was $125, which was my um, friends and family discount, which I actually regret now. Uh, I, I usually charge $150 an hour, but yeah, so me, when I'm going into the house, a lot of times I'm not saying prayers. I'm kind of just speaking or talking, trying to communicate with them to let them know that I know they're there. Is this learned or a gift? Um, it's a, you can learn about the paranormal, but no, you would not have the talent I have. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. a gift. Yes, it is. Right. Well, I mean, it seems like it is. Right now, it's yeah. not. I, mean, I believe in spiritual gifts. Don't know if I, it goes as far as that. But yeah, I do believe that others have, people yes. have gifts that most of uh, civilization. I mean, I'm a certified, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I'm a certified expert. I have my I evidence here. I going to say, I'm a certified nut, and everybody knows. Would it. you like to see what my evidence? Say, yeah, let me see. Yeah, I'm glad you're showing me that. For sure, for sure. Thank you. At least somebody else think that of you. All right. That's right. And you'll see my, so, um, I do have a, a side business called uh, Spirit House, where I do help people. And this is the first complaint I've ever had. 
which kind of you know throws me back. I've been to houses. I haven't done anything. I would say, oh, that could that's your heater. This, this, that. So you just didn't find anything. That was the point. No, I did find. I felt the, what I felt mostly was the cold spots. And that's where, as you say, ghosts exist. Yes, yes. In the cold spot. Yes. And when you told him, did you tell him in the sense basically that you do have ghosts because I felt these cold yes, spots. Yes. Yes. And it did take five hours. And let me tell you, I have another job. The energy it takes out of me. Okay, I literally missed, I think, four days of work after that. All right, sir, did he tell you he succeeded in what he, you he, asked he him to do? He told me he succeeded, yes, but, um, you He's know. He's still there. Um, that night, it seemed to go away, but then the next night, it started to come back again, and I made an audio recording of it. I recorded it, and I handed it to the bailiff earlier. Yeah, y'all can go ahead and play it, play it. Play it. All right, sir. He came. You said it went away, but that's what came later. That, that's what How came do I know it came later? Did you contact him the next day and say, listen to this? Oh, no, he contacted me with the payment. No, I'm saying this. Oh, I know that. I'm just saying, Informing Your you on the night well, that it returned. Did I, he come and say to you, the ghost has no, returned? I didn't, did not. No. That's my point. You I did not give, him. be quiet. Sorry. You, it was a breach of contract. Because in your opinion, but however, you did not give, even if I were to believe it, and I don't, you have to give a person a chance to cure the breach. And that's when you were supposed to go back and say, I still have the ghost, come try again. And then if he doesn't try, it's like, okay, if it doesn't work then again, or it works and then returns, that's what he, he can, he's allowed to say, I tried. And he could not cure the breach. But then the judge would decide whether it was a breach. I don't believe it was a breach. Well, I don't, I think you got the services that you paid for. He came and he looked through, that cost $600. Because it returned, his game is make sure it returns so he can come back and get him another 600. But you didn't even know the con. Well, but I, I didn't know. I wanted to give it more time to see if it kind of went away, to see if it had no, a lasting favor. you were supposed favor. to tell him immediately. But, but, but then, Two days later, or you said it returned a few days later, you were supposed to say, it's back. Have a good but, day. Your claim is dismissed. All rise. Judge Mathis has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I'm building a taller fence. We have to do it in court. Just step this way. Coming up. He doesn't I, know a star when he sees one. I wouldn't consider myself a star of his production. Oh, why well, are you making all these demands, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were. You're all these demands you make it. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. <laughs> Adam Fields is suing James Moore in the amount of $300. Mr. Fields claims he was hired to appear in the defendant's movie and says he was sent home without pay after a disagreement over his costume. State your name? Adam Fields. Sir? James Moore. All right, and sir, you're suing the defendant for $300, alleging he failed to pay you for a performance you did in the short film? That is correct. All right, start with you. I've known James for maybe like six months now, and he called me. He said, hey, one of my actors dropped out, and I know you act, so would you like to fill in for me? I'll make it worth your while. I'll pay you $300. If you come in, you can use this for your reel. I'm running super short on time. I have to go out. I buy a blazer. I show up for the day of the shoot. Um, after they finally got everything kind of settled on set, we did a dress rehearsal. And it's kind of where they see what I brought that they realize this is not what we want for the character. So they give me some options. The first one, the sleeves were way too short. It was taking away from the dramatic value. If I walk in, they're looking, well, like a clown. What did you say when they were bringing you things that were too small? Well, I expressed my concerns to the PA. And like I said, everyone on set was pretty stressed out. James was the director or? Yeah, yes, right. I, I'm he's I'm the director. He was being a diva the whole time. I, I was not being a diva, I was actually very respectful. Let me hear from you, sir. So 
I have actually evidence here where you can see in the text messages that I sent him that I asked him to bring several options. You see that, please? That's your first thing out your mouth, sir, is that you only brought, you didn't know what to bring other than a blazer. Coming up. How did it end? I, he when told I, me to walk off set because I was being I did a not diva. Tell he him said, if you're not happy with you the say? way I run my set, go home. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. Mathis Court is back with the case of Adam Fields, who is suing James Moore for unpaid wages. He only brought a blazer. I do not understand why. I even explained in the text message, bring what you can. You know, we'll work with you. We, we'll take care of you if we have some backup options. He needs to understand. I don't know what type of actor he is. He doesn't decide what he gets to wear on my film. We decide what look mm -hmm. we need you to be in. I honestly don't think he's a real actor. I did share my reel with him. He saw it. So if he didn't think I was a real actor, I don't understand why he asked me to be part of his production. I'm sure I'm not the only actor that he knows. They reached out to you. Yeah. You, are you saying they reached he, out to you, correct? He had come up to me when we had originally met and told me that he was an actor. So you stand up. If this is something you want to do in your future and you want to make a career out of it, you take one for the team. And he wasn't willing to work with us. I tried on everything they gave me. Everything. Everything they gave me. And nothing was satisfactory to you. It was just He's a diva. Uh, the no. whole, you go through the whole wardrobe on set and nothing is sufficient. Well, they gave me two options. That's all they gave me. The first hour was him trying to get the set yeah, up on Yeah, he doesn't know who he was dealing with. I, I did ask him to come in early. He doesn't I, know a star when he sees one. <laughs> I wouldn't consider myself the star of his production. Oh, I'm you, sorry. Why well, are you making all these demands, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were. You're all these demands you making. To be honest, at this point, I just want to get paid for my time. And overall, just to make up for the entire process. Did you complete your services? I was definitely, no. I was there for five hours. How did it end? I, he told I, me to walk off set because I was being I a diva. I did not tell he him said, to walk off set. He said, if you're not happy with you the say? way I run my set, go home. How will Judge Mathis rule? Find out when Mathis Court returns. You're watching Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. This is Mathis Court with Judge Mathis. I don't believe he would have you put on clothes that's gonna hurt his film. This is, he's more interested in making things perfect than you are. He has a film he has to sell and get his money back and profit. So no, I'm not going to grant you this judgment because you were unsatisfied with the wardrobe that the director requested you to wear. They have an idea of what they want. They have their own vision. Some of them even have men wear dresses in their movies. And, in, uh, and they've become very famous actors. Uh, Robin Williams, he became most famous where he played a woman. And that's what brought him to my attention and he became a superstar. So I'm saying that to say, you have to do what the director and the wardrobe department tells you to do. Otherwise, do what you did. Walk off, but don't expect to get paid because you're not today. Uh, your claim is dismissed. All rise. Judge Mathis has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I wish you the best of luck in your career. The replacement that I bought in was so much better and I'm very happy with the results, so thank God he wasn't in my film. Mm -hmm. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.